Now welcome to unit E, which will be about the particle filter. Now let's first have a look at our base filter again, which takes our old belief, the control and our measurement and from that first computes a prediction, which I will now give in a continuous form. And then the correction, which is our predicted belief multiplied by the probability of our measurement under the condition that we're in the state xt. And then we return our new belief. Now we have seen two different ways of implementing this. The first one was using discrete approximations of distributions. So instead of having a continuous distribution, we had something like that and the convolution was computed using a sum instead of an integral. So if this is the prediction and this is the correction, those two steps were implemented in the completely same way by just replacing the integral by a sum in the first equation. And then we noted that if you start somewhere and we move, then by the convolution our distribution will get wider until in our case it approximated a bell-shaped distribution. Now subdividing space in that way leads to a histogram filter, whereas our other representation was parametric. So we said our belief is normal distributed so that the entire distribution can be represented by the first and second moment mu and sigma square. And this has led to the Kalman filter equations which were of the form mu t and sigma t, the covariance matrix, which computed the prediction step and then a Kalman gain in our new mu t now without an overline and variance sigma t and those three formulas were the correction step. Now if we compare those two we see that here any distribution is possible especially distributions having multiple modes meaning multiple peaks. On the other hand I have to define a discrete raster and we already discussed that I might want to make them small for a better accuracy but then in turn I will have so many of them rendering computation inefficient. So there's a trade-off between the approximation and the cost. On the other hand my Kalman filter is very efficient. It only needs to deal with the first and second moments. Also, if our distributions are indeed normal distributions, then the representation is exact. On the other hand, we assume the normal distribution, so we do have only one peak. Now let's have a look at this unimodality. Now when we introduced the robot's position as a distribution, we said we do not know exactly where the robot is. Instead of pretending it is at a certain position, we decided to represent its position by this distribution. And so after we move, the robot will have a predicted position like that. And then if we integrate a measurement, this will lead to a new posterior like that. However, there may be situations where the robot might be here or here. And probably you thought about that earlier when we encountered the case where we started in this corner and moved down here. And we updated our position using a matching of the walls of the arena to our laser scan data. And that worked very well. However, the arena is a square. And if we had placed our robot here, nothing would be different in terms of the observation that our LiDAR sees. And so in fact, it could also be placed here or here. And so if we don't know our start position, we could model this as distribution having four peaks, meaning a 2D version of this, which looks like that. Now say this is my arena, and I don't have any initial information as to where my robot is. Now what do you think? What does this mean for the base filter? Does it mean A, it can't handle this case, or B, it can handle the case, and the distribution somehow needs to be, say, a very, very flat peak, or C, it can handle the case, but since I don't know where I am, the distribution is just a constant, so this is flat. What do you think? A, B, or C? 